Hi everyone and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to make a phone case that works exactly like the viral watermelon game from Japan. The concept is pretty simple, but this ended up being one of the most complex DIYs that I've ever done. It took over 14 hours to complete and it involved sewing, drawing, sculpting, molding, two rounds of baking and painting. So you've probably seen this game somewhere on your social media lately. This is called Suica Game or Watermelon Game and it went super viral in Japan. And no, I am not sponsored by them. I've just been playing this non-stop ever since it came out. The goal is to merge fruits together until you get a watermelon. And this is far more exciting than you can ever imagine. I've been playing this every day for weeks and I've only managed to get a watermelon once. I love the aesthetics of this game and think it's perfect for DIYs. I'm going to be using the Google Pixel 8 Pro for this tutorial, which you can see is a pretty big phone. The extra width means that I can stack a smaller phone case on top to create a replica of the fruit box. The edges line up perfectly and it looks so much neater compared to making the box out of plastic or nanotape. First I'm marking out the height of the box and then cutting it out with scissors. Now we have a first problem, which is how to stick both of these together. Sticking silicone onto silicone is notoriously difficult, and even glues designed for this don't always work. So I'm going to use my favorite solution for attaching squishies onto phone cases, which is to simply sew them together. I'm going to use this transparent nylon thread, which should hopefully be almost invisible. I'm marking out the places I want to stitch and then poking the holes with a needle tool. This is technically optional because most needles are strong enough to go through silicone, but I always find it safer to make the holes beforehand. Especially because these cases have some weird angles, so I don't want to try pushing a needle through with my bare hands. Before I start sewing, I'm going to trace the outline of the fruit box onto paper to create a template for later. Then I'm threading the needle and carefully pushing it through both phone cases. I'm sewing the case in seven separate locations and then using a surgeon's knot to secure the ends. This is a special knot that's popular for closing friendship bracelets because it's super strong and won't come apart by accident. Start by tying a regular knot like this. Remember which direction you loop the thread, because now you want to go back and tie a second knot in the opposite direction. Most importantly, you have to loop the thread three times until you get something like this. Slide the first knot down to where you want it to be and then pull the second one tight. This will secure the thread incredibly well and you can trim the ends. Now the base is ready and the stitches are totally invisible. I'm really pleased with how this turned out because it looks much neater than trying to stick the edges down with glue. The next challenge is to create all the fruits in the same size and scale as from the game. To do so, I'm cutting out the paper template from earlier and checking that it fits inside the pocket. Then I'm sketching on each fruit using a screenshot as reference. By the way, if you like drawing, then please check out my new How to Draw Manga book, which I've linked below. It contains over 40 chibi characters and lots of tips for creating kawaii artwork. Next, I'm going to create a mock-up model of each fruit using polymer clay. These will be used for the mold, so the color doesn't matter at this point. I decided that molds were necessary for this DIY because I need to make identical versions of many fruits, and I don't want to do all of that freehand. As you can see, I'm just pressing the clay onto the template to make sure they're the correct size. The most difficult fruit to make was definitely the grape. This is one of the smallest pieces in the game, but it also has more detail than any of the others. The base of the grape is actually a flower shape, and I'm just going to add one more ball to the end. Then I'm adding a second layer on top to bulk out the thickness. I'm not used to making miniatures, and I have so much respect for creators who regularly do this. You can see here just how tiny it is. I also smoothed out the surface a bit, so it's easier to paint the face later on. So here are all the finished pieces, and it's time for the first round of baking. 
These go into the oven for 30 minutes at 110 degrees Celsius or 230 Fahrenheit. Now I can use these to test out a working prototype of the phone case. My biggest worry is that the smaller pieces will disappear behind the bigger ones or that some fruits might be too thick to slide around. However, to my delight, all the pieces move around just like in the game. The only problem is that the smallest fruits can fall out of the hole at the base of the phone case. To fix this, I'm going to sew an X shape across the opening like this. Then I'm closing it up with another surgeon's knot and we're ready for the next step. To create the mold, I'm going to use two-part silicone putty. This part is quite a bit easier compared to molding for squishies because the fruit pieces are fairly flat. Many years ago, I had an online shop selling handmade macaron jewelry, so I have lots of experience making molds of macaron shells. These fruits are almost exactly the same shape, so I'm pretty sure I can use the same technique for them. Place a ball of silicone putty on a flat surface and press the piece inside so the edges push up around it. If you see any gaps between the polymer clay and putty, then use your fingers to apply very gentle pressure from both sides to close it up. You don't want to push from one side only because this can displace the clay and create air bubbles. When your molds are in the curing stage like this, it's important not to touch or move them until they have fully hardened. Now we have a perfectly smooth mold of each fruit, which means we can make as many copies as we like. For the next stage, I really debated about what type of clay to use. I normally prefer working with air dry clay and then just painting on the details, but because of all the bright colors here, I decided to go with polymer clay. I bought this 12 pack of Fimo Soft and the colors worked out really well. I'm starting with the cherry and creating a slightly lighter green color for the leaf. This is quite challenging because of the size and I'm glad I have a mold to make duplicates. The strawberry is also really small, but the shape is a bit easier to work with. I'm adding the green part on by hand and then smoothing down the edges with a toothpick. The Asian pear is probably the easiest fruit in the game because it's perfectly round. To make it visually more interesting, I'm creating a marble texture using yellow and white clay. Now it's getting increasingly easier because the fruits are larger. The pineapple leaves need a bit of trimming, but this was fairly straightforward to make. If you're experienced with polymer clay, then please look away now because you're about to see the messiest Skinner blend ever made. A Skinner blend is a technique for creating color gradients using clay. It's normally done with a pasta machine, but a roller also works. You start by cutting two colors into long triangle shapes and then putting them together to form a rectangle. Fold this in half and roll it out. Then fold it again and roll it again. The pressure of the rolling pin blends the clay together to create a smooth transition. This is my first time trying it and I'm pretty sure I didn't do everything right, but the final result is fairly decent. This gives me a pink and white gradient on the peach, just like in the game. Now I've created all the fruits using molds. Even though I only have one version of some fruits, I like the option of making more if needed. The only one which I don't need a mold for is the watermelon because it's so rare in the game. This time I want to try a slightly different Skinner blend method. This is called the teardrop Skinner blend and instead of starting with two flat triangles, you pinch the clay into two teardrop shapes. These are placed together and then rolled out just like before. Keep folding and rolling until a gradient starts to form. I don't need an outline for the watermelon because I can see it's about 10% larger than the melon. So I'm just using the melon on the template and letting it go slightly over the edges. The final thing I need to make is the cloud and I can see from the screenshot that it's about as wide as the peach. I'm pressing it out with pale yellow clay and using some scissors to add details. And now it's finally time for the second round of baking. Even with the help of molds, these took so long to make. I'm really glad now that I chose to use polymer clay because the colors look so vibrant and I don't have to create all of that again with paint. I do, however, have to paint on the facial features and that's going to be a tricky task in itself. 
Most of the fruits are so tiny that there aren't any brushes thin enough to do this. I'm going to use a diabetic lancet, which is the thinnest tool I could find that can possibly be used to apply paint. Believe it or not, the cherry actually has a facial expression, which is too small to see in the game. Here's a close-up, and it's pretty hilarious. I'm trying my best to replicate this on the clay using some dark red paint. The next difficult one is the grape, because the surface is quite bumpy. The strawberry is a bit easier to paint, because it's smoother. It also has lots of pink seeds, which I'm going to dot on using a toothpick. One thing I underestimated is just how long it takes to paint on details like this. It looks very basic, but mixing the colors for each one and correcting mistakes really adds up. For the pineapple, I created a base layer with a crisscross pattern in light brown. I had to redo this about four times because the lines were either too dark or too light. The peach was relatively easy in comparison because it just required a dark red. But after painting on the mouth, I realized that the eyes were too close together. The good part about using acrylic paint on polymer clay is that it's fairly easy to fix mistakes. Simply wipe the paint away with a damp tissue before it dries. I was quite relieved by the time I got to the melon because this is large enough to start using a paintbrush. A brush lets you pick up more paint at once and it's generally easier to control. A lancet or toothpick can't actually hold any paint, so you have to scoop the paint up and use the tip to drag it into place. And finally, we've reached the watermelon. This requires a bit of painting, and I'm also adding highlights to create a fake glossy effect. I originally wanted to glaze all of these, but I realized that it might make them less visible inside the phone case. As a rule of thumb, you never want to have two shiny textures directly underneath each other, because that is going to reflect too much light. Since the silicone case is already shiny, the fruits underneath have to be matte in order to show up well. And now it's time to assemble everything. Even though this DIY was so time-consuming to make, I'm really happy that everything works the way I hoped it would. My biggest concern was that the smaller pieces would get jammed up behind the bigger ones, but all of these fit together fairly well. Especially after placing the phone inside the phone case, it really makes the pieces pop out. The very last step is to add the cloud, who actually has a name, and she's called Poppy. I have no choice but to use glue here, which isn't ideal on silicone, but it's enough to keep it in place. If you want to, you could use an extra strip of silicone to cover the opening and prevent the fruits from falling out. However, I love the way this looks and the fun of being able to put the pieces in and out. I'm Johanna, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!